closed out its home schedule of the regular season on Saturday with a 17-9 win over Northwestern on Senior Day. The Boilermakers now 7-4 and four overall and 5-3 and three in the Big Ten. They have one game left in the regular season, and that's coming up on Saturday, and it's always a big one. The Boilermakers will play for the Old Oaken Bucket down in Bloomington against the Indiana Hoosiers. Kickoff in Memorial Stadium will be at 3.30. Good evening, everybody, from Walk-Ons in West Lafayette. This is the Jeff Brown Show. We'll be talking Boilermaker football with the head coach. 888-246-2678 is our number. You can follow along on Facebook tonight on the Purdue Athletic site or on Twitter on the Purdue football site. Let us know where you're watching from. And uh, if you have any questions for the coach, we'll get those along as well. And uh, in addition to hearing from Coach Brown, we're going to have Tyrone Tracy on a little bit later on in the show. And also Corey Trice will join us as well. We'll have the head coach when we come back in two minutes. It is the Jeff Brown Show, presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. A gain of 17 on second and 20. A gain of 19 for Lewis. They give it to him again to the 15. Mm -hmm. They did this. Mike Allstott was in the backfield. Second down and six. O'Connell to throw. Maybe. Gets it out of there. Caught. Jones. Touchdown. O'Connell to Jones. One more time. You're gonna see on, on you're not gonna see it, but on the right side of your screen, you got Charlie Jones. He runs a bench route and the DB falls down. So he's open right now, but O'Connell's looking the other way, surprisingly. And then he finds him. And the reason he's so wide open because he was still on the third down and eleven. Movement on the line, and a flag comes down. This is gonna be a free play for Purdue. And caught by Durham. Out across the 15 to the 45. What a throw it. Tight end Durham. Touchdown, Purdue. Northwestern has what they want. They have two guys to stop this play, but they both come across the line of scrimmage, and Durham is leaking out. Wide. But the middle is soft. That's where the passing game can have success for Northwestern. Freeman looks like a design quarterback. Wrong had it ripped away. Purdue's got the football. Cam Allen comes up with the fumble recovery. They need to get to the 49. Quick screen outside, I would imagine. They don't have the numbers for the draw. Freeman lost the ball. And Northwestern retains possession. Back to the Jeff Brom Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. The 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. Uh, the Boilermakers getting ready for the Indiana Hoosiers, but Jeff, we're going to talk first about your win over Northwestern on Saturday. Uh, unfortunately, the weatherman was right. He said it would be cold and blustery, and it was really cold, and it was really Really, really blustery really again on Saturday. on Saturday. Yeah, you know, in November, you hope to have a little luck on your side. We've had some good weather during the week, and unfortunately on the weekend, uh, it's not been the best. And the field was slippery as well, uh, which we hadn't really had that a whole lot, but it was kind of frozen, slippery, and the conditions were a little rough. But you know what? Uh, you got to deal with it. Both teams do. And I thought our guys competed and just found a, found a way to win. You got to the end zone a couple of times in the first half. Um, Aiden O'Connell found probably his two favorite targets on the season, Charlie Jones and Charlie Payne Durham, Payne -Durham. Uh, uh, and then uh, the, and defense then the defense really held, really held, held on, and I thought the defense held in pretty tough when they, they had to in the second half to pull out the, the win for you. No, I think the last two weeks we've made some adjustments on defense. I think they've been beneficial. I think our guys have been able to play faster and better with some of the things we've done. They've definitely displayed that. You know, in order to win football games, you've got to take advantage of our strengths and find their weaknesses, and they had not played very well on offense, so we wanted our defense to play a dominant game, and I thought 
uh, for the most part, we did a really good job. We got turnovers, we got some negative plays, uh, and it really helped us win. Yeah, we didn't know until about an hour before kickoff who their quarterback was going to be, and they went, wound up going with a guy named Cole Freeman, who was a walk-on, a sophomore, and had, no, I think, only thrown three passes on the season. So not a guy you had a lot of tape in coming into the game. No, we didn't. They played a lot of quarterbacks and uh, rotated that uh, position quite a bit. So whoever they brought in, um, we were just prepared to, you know, realize, hey, they want to run the football. They want to control the clock. Uh, I don't think whoever they bring in is going to be a guy that's going to air it out a whole lot. So we've got to make sure our defenses are called that way and our guys understand that. They're stopping the run is the most important. And I think overall we had a good grasp of that and our guys did a good job. All right, we're going to go to the phone lines. Again, our number is 888 246 Six seven eight, and our friend Don is calling in from Indianapolis. Go ahead, Don. Go ahead, Don. Yeah, good evening, gentlemen. Um, I want to ask Coach Brown, um, what does he think of the rule about high stepping? Should that be a penalty, uh, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty? And my second question is, when do you start hearing uh, about any Purdue players entering the transfer portal, or have you uh, had anybody? Uh, tell you they're going to transfer. Thank you and good luck on Saturday. Okay, thank you, Don, okay, and thanks thank for the call, and thanks for always call, listening. For always you know, your first, your first question, question on the uh, high the, stepping uh, that got stepping called for a penalty, for a penalty. That, rule that rule was changed a couple years ago where it does so state in the rule that if you change your gait or – uh, you know, swing your legs you know, in a high-stepping way that they can call penalty on that. So it, it, it actually can be called. Now, it was a subtle uh, amount of that, but he did uh, he did do that. So, uh, you know, we've got to be smarter and make sure we don't do foolish things and that, and that could really hurt the team. It took away a touchdown. Uh, now, I've seen a lot worse than that, but at the same time, you know what, uh, we, we need to make sure that doesn't happen again, and uh, we've got to uh, be smarter than that. So that's the answer to that question. Uh, the second one, you know what, uh, you know what, uh, I think all of our guys right now are just trying to finish the season and uh, finish it strong and strong and. You know, you never know who's going to transfer and who's who's not. I think after the season, all those guys, uh, we'll sit down with them and kind of tell them exactly where they stand and and what their future looks like here. And and, and in the end, we want them to make the best decision for them. So if it's to stay with us and continue to play and and improve and get better and fight for the team, we're all for it. If they feel like they need another opportunity to to get a chance to get on the field better, we're all for that. Uh, So I think that'll happen uh, after the season. There are certain windows now with the new rules that are put into place uh, that's going to – you know, help those guys go in at a certain time, but uh, you know, we'll just let it play out and do the best job we can. I should mention this is the last uh, show for the regular season. We do have another uh, Jeff Brown show coming up on December 22nd, and that is the day after high school signing day, and it's also something that will give us an opportunity to talk about Purdue's Bowl. But you know, the, it, we've talked about this a lot the last couple of seasons. The, the portal has changed the way you have to recruit high school athletes, junior college athletes, and now other schools athletes. Well, everything well, everything changes every year every on that year aspect, on that aspect. And, um, and, um, you know, you've got to do the best job, to be honest with your guys, uh, coaching the best way you can, help them improve and help them win football games. And uh, you hope that that uh, works, and uh, you hope that they appreciate that. But in the end, if someone uh, wants a better opportunity, we, we will help uh, make that happen for them. Uh, and then, you, you know, there's just – from the portal to other teams trying to recruit your players uh, and trying to make deals, which which is happening, unfortunately, and it's not supposed to. Uh, and then NIL and all those things that factor into it, uh, you know what, uh, you, you, you never for sure who your roster is going to be, so you just have to – Hopefully, Hopefully uh, uh, by being by honest, honest up front with your players, they reciprocate that, that, and they're honest and up front with you, and, 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 and you make and the best make decision for all. All right, we're coming to you from walk-ons in the Purdue Memorial Union. It is the Jeff Brom Show, presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Shot clock, got to get something going. Jenkins, late 
drives, stop and pop, got it for two. Well, he split beautifully, didn't he? Well traveled, but here just a little split, a little crossover, dead delivery. Down that sideline, able to keep it in for the point. Uh, there's no more servers left on this roster from last year, so when Raven Colvin hit the floor in the offseason, she wanted to become the best setter in America. And she certainly has improved vastly, having never served. And Emma Ellis gets another kill. Had a career high 27 digs against the Boilermakers in the 2021 season. Balancefer puts it down herself. Not bad for a 5'10 setter. Shows you the strength of this Boilermaker team. Maddie Chin, the senior over there, to give Hudson some words of encouragement. Balancefer. Ellis on the right side, and the Boilers get the point. So I'm sure it'll be a nice reunion after senior night festivities are over tonight. Chin puts it down in the face of Humphrey. That's not a nice welcome back, but it'll suffice. Goes back to serve. Hudson with the back row attack, and she gets the kill. Supporting your Boilermakers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Rorman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammered Down. Purdue against Indiana on Saturday. We'll have our broadcast from the uh, Bloomington campus on uh, 2.30. At 2.30 and then 3.30 will be the uh, kickoff for the Boilermakers and the Hoosiers. Uh, Jeff, it's always been a next man up mantra in your football program and you had to go to that a couple of times on Saturday. First, Devin Mockaby went out early. I think the good news there is Dylan Downing and Kobe Lewis have had a lot of playing time this year, so they were able to step right in, and I thought did a, a pretty good job, uh, both of them, on Saturday. Yeah, uh, you know, you got to continue to just battle through injuries and make sure you have guys ready to go, and other guys need to be able to step up, and that's continuing to happen. Uh, we did have some unfortunate things happen in the past game. Losing Gus Harwood for the rest of the year is a blow. He's done an outstanding job for us. Uh, really has played, really has played very, very well. He's our leader on the offensive line, makes all the calls, a great snapper. He's played a lot of football, a ton of experience. That so hurts. That one hurts. Josh and uh, Josh Goldenberger stepped played hard. in. And so, we played hard. Continue, so we just got to continue help to improve help him improve and, and, and help down us the line and down the line back. and yes, running back. Devin yes, losing early, Devin early. Uh, a little bit of a blow there. A of a blow and, there. Uh, fortunately, and, uh, fortunately um, um, you know, you know, Kobe uh, and Kobe uh, and uh, Dylan, uh, Dylan uh, stepped in. Both and, uh, stepped in. They ran hard. And, uh, they ran hard. And, uh, and uh, we just got to continue to get them work. They have to know that they have to know that the numbers going to be called. They're going to be called. They got to be ready to go. Like always, uh, like always, you know, between now, you know, between now and, and the end of the season, the end of the season, these things happen. These things happen, and you have to be ready for them. On the other side, you didn't have Branson Dean on Saturday, but one of the luxuries you have with this football team is you've got one of the deepest defensive lines we've seen at Purdue in quite a long time, and it was a defensive line that came up with some big plays, including the game clincher late by Jackson. Well, I really think well, that, I really uh, think that having, uh, the depth, having the depth at that, that position has helped us all year long, long question. Uh, without question. I feel like they're, I feel like they're the defense. backbone of our it's defense, and it's not necessarily you know, having a George, necessarily having a George out Karloftis multiple out there. It's having multiple guys that can go in there. They'll play hard. They're, they're fresh. fresh. They know they're going to get an opportunity every week to improve and get better, and they all have helped us at some point in every last one of them that has played. So that is really something to build on. We've got to continue to build other positions. And, and, and try to build depth at those, depth places, at those at places at linebackers back and defensive back, back to help but us. The defensive line but the defensive has, really, line done has really done a good job. They work hard, hard and I'm real proud of them. You know, one guy that we've been waiting for to, to kind of break through and get that big sack is Nick Carraway. He's been so close so many times this year, and he had a huge sack for you on Saturday, forced a fumble, and he's a guy that we're really excited for the next few seasons. Well, this is a true freshman that's come in, and uh, he's got great athleticism, and he's tough, and he's got a high motor. Um, we think he can be a – outstanding uh, All-American player here when it's all said and done. Um, you know, he's shown great signs. He works really hard in practice. practice. Without question, it's, Without it's, question, it's, it's important it's, to try to get him in the game, try to more, get him game even more, more and more every week. And as we proceed uh, down the road, he's probably going to be a, you know, close to an every down guy once we get going uh, and he gets, you know, a little more experience. You know, another guy that we've been talking about, I think more and more the last few weeks, Lawrence Johnson has really, I think, picked up his pace in the last couple of games, and uh, it seems like he's been a real disruptor. He's had some tackles for loss, and you know, he's always been solid for you, but it seems like he's been even more active these last few games. 
Well, Lawrence is a veteran, and um, I consider him, you know, one of our leaders on that side of the ball. He really cares. He wants to win. It means something to him. He takes a lot of pride in representing his home state. He's played a lot of football for us. He's battled through injuries, uh, and he gives us great effort. And he's somebody that just, you know, fights on every play. And sometimes he he won't win, but you know, he's 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 battling and trying hard. And then there'll be other plays where he just kind of has a knack, you know, to bat the ball or to be in the right position at the right time. So, uh, you know, he's uh, really been. Um, a great leader for us, and uh, we, we want to try to finish the season strong for him. You know, you and I talked right after the game on Saturday, and it was really amazing looking at the Big Ten this week. He had seven games, and all but one of those seven games was down to the wire, going down to the really the last possession of the last couple of possessions. Sometimes in November you get blowouts because a lot of teams have waved the white flag at that point, but I thought maybe it was a credit to the conference. Every game this week except for one was a real dogfight. Well, I do think uh, there's more and more parity in the league than there's ever been. Of course, Ohio State and Michigan are dominant teams, but those teams had to go down to the wire, which proves that there's a lot of parity uh, in this in this uh, football conference, top to bottom. You know, sometimes the weather does affect that a little bit, but I just feel like on any given day throughout the Big Ten, almost anybody can win a football game, and that's a, a great sign of – uh, the parity and, uh, you know, where this conference has come. And, and it makes you know that, uh, you know, when you step on the field, you better be ready to play because you can lose as well. I know your focus is all on Indiana and the Big Ten West right now, but I have to ask, uh, break down that Ohio State-Michigan matchup for me a little bit. It's one that everybody in college football is going to be watching this week. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, two really, really talented teams, without question, probably two of the top four teams. I, I hope they both get in the playoff. They probably both deserve it. Uh, but they're going to have a little luck on their side just the way this thing plays out. But uh, both teams have played outstanding football. They got uh, sound running games. They got athletes uh, across the board at all the skill positions. They have a really good uh, line on both sides of the ball, really good tight ends. Um, you know, the fact that it's in Columbus, I'll probably give a slight edge to Ohio State, but it's a slight edge. I mean, I think it's going to be a heck of a football game. Ohio State has a lot of skilled players. The one thing that Michigan can do that maybe others can is they can match up with them better than anybody as far as athleticism and size and, and ability, uh, especially on their def with their defense. So I just think it's going to be a heck of a football game. Uh, you never know who's going to win. Obviously, Michigan pulled off the big upset last year and, and spearheaded that in, into the college football playoff. And, you know, it wouldn't shock me when it's all said and done uh, if both teams make it in. All right, we'll be back with the head coach in two minutes. It's the Jeff Brom Show, presented by Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Getting your degree online. Here at Purdue, a lot of people come back to games. They like the program. They like the kind of kids they have. Oh, Andy just absolutely hammers. What a nice call, too, out of the baseline, out of bounds. Atmosphere for college basketball. But look at this little duck in seal. Another court between should we attack or should we go inside? Good settle here. Edie's been waiting for the ball for two possessions. Absolutely. This area, you are dead on delivery. And right here, goal, no matter what he does. That's number four. If I'm not mistaken, my goal. The late in the shot clock, got to get something going. Jenkins, late drive, stop and pop. Got it for two. Oh, he split beautifully, didn't he? Well traveled. But here, just a little split, a little crossover, dip delivery. Down that sideline, able to keep it in for the point. Uh, there's no more servers left on this roster from last year. So when Raven Colvin hit the floor in the offseason, she wanted to become the best setter in America. And she certainly has improved vastly, having never served. And Emma Ellis gets another kill. Had a career-high 27 digs against the Boilermakers in the 2021 season. Balance Seifer puts it down herself. Not bad for a 5'10 setter. Shows you the strength of this Boilermaker team. Maddie Chin, the senior over there, to give Hudson some words of encouragement. Balance Seifer, Ellis on the right side, and the Boilers get the point. So I'm sure it'll be a nice reunion after senior night festivities are over tonight. Chin puts it down in the face of Humphrey. That's not a nice welcome back but it'll suffice. Goes back to serve. Hudson with the back row attack and she gets the kill.
say probably not because you're going to be uh, on your way down to Bloomington and at Bloomington when those are being played. Correct. Uh, Ira from uh, Swamico, Wisconsin, checking in. David Mears from Cumberland, Indiana. Joyce from Memphis, Tennessee. Katie from Danville, Kentucky. Preston from Anna, Texas. And Chad from Evansville. Chris is going to give you a free uh, game plan here. He says run the ball in bubble screens and draw plays. He says their defense is very aggressive and head hunting. We're going to talk about the Indiana defense after a little bit, but um, you know, thanks to Chris and, and everybody. I, there are a lot of, you, you know, the one thing about the bucket game, Jeff, everybody has opinions, everybody has a rooting interest, and this is a fun week if you're in the state of Indiana and if you've been around this football game for a while. Well, these games are always fun, especially for the fans, uh, because you know, a lot of those fans know each other, uh, they work together, and they hang out together, maybe best buddies. Uh, but, uh, you know, a lot of the players will know each other. So, you know, those are the type of games that uh, you have a lot of pride. You, know, you want to go out and represent uh, yourself and your school and your team and come out with a win. And really, you know, these type of games on any given day, anybody can win. So it's going to be a matter of who prepares the hardest, who's going to play the hardest, be the most efficient, you know, really concentrate and lock in and focus and do the best job they can uh, because that's what it's going to take to win. You know, we haven't talked about it, I don't think, for a couple of years, but there is a Brom family tradition of a big football game on Thanksgiving Day, if I remember correctly, a game that is usually videotaped and critiqued afterward. Uh, I take it the game is, is that, that's in the past now? Is, is, the, is the Brom family game on retirement at this point? Well, unfortunately, yes. It probably hasn't happened, uh, shoot, for maybe 10 or 15 years. But, uh, you know, growing up uh, – as a kid, there was a tackle football game uh, between adults uh, in the backyard, a really small field. They put the flower down and, and lined the field, and you'd film it, you'd critique it, you had the fans out, and it was a lot of fun. And then it kind of morphed into, you know, once we got a little older, because the kids wanted to play, a, you know, a, a, a touch football game mm -hmm. uh, that you played every every year, and there were injuries every year. My, my father one time had a punctured lung, had to go to the hospital because uh, his uncle kind of, according to him, cheap shot him, but he <laughs> just tried to probably push him too hard when he jumped up in the air. Uh, but those were a lot of fun, and uh, you know, we just had a lot of relatives in the area. Uh, my, my father is, is, is one of seven or one of nine. My mom is one of six. My mom's mom is one of 15. So there's just a lot of people. And uh, when you get together on the holidays, it was a lot of fun. And, and of course, ath athletic events and things like that were fun for all of us. And we always participated. So Thanksgiving was always a fun, fun morning. I'm assuming that food was a big part of that Thanksgiving day. What was typically on the Brahm family table on Thanksgiving day? Really very traditional, uh, without question, uh, from, from top to bottom. You know, when you talk about turkey and ham and mashed potatoes and sweet potatoes and any form of macaroni and green beans and corn and, uh, you know, rolls and, and uh, cranberry sauce and all those things. So uh, it was a very enjoyable day. Uh, you know, we normally had one set of grandparents that we really liked the food. Then we went to another side, and they were a little more fancy with it. So <laughs> sometimes we would take some leftovers over and heat it up and didn't want to insult anybody. But we yeah. just liked the traditional, normal uh, food that you get on Thanksgiving. I, I understand you. And I assume the food always came after the football game, right? Without question. Oh, yeah. yeah. We, we played early, and uh, <laughs> then you came back and ate your lunch and then uh, went over to the other side of the families uh, around dinner and did all that until – late at the night. It was always a fun, fun holiday. All right. Speaking of food, we're going to let, uh, let Coach Brom have his. When we come back, we'll be talking with Tyrone Tracy. It is the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Wide open! Get it in! Touchdown, Purdue! Seth Morales! Holy Toledo! Thomas steps away, Coleman football! They've got it! Beasley rushes free for the Purdue touchdown! It's pandemonium, Coach! Open you! We have a whole lot more. It's a great win for Purdue. For nearly a century, Ross Aid Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old Golden Black will endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about them, Boilermakers? 
Boil her up, friends. The time is now. Feed down into the post. Learn strong inside. Gets the finish for her second bucket of the day. And the first look for the Sycamores off the mark. Here comes Janae Terry. Kicks it over to Petrie. And she sinks it from deep. Janae Terry, the no-look pass over to Layden. Layden down the middle, kicks it out to Harden. And she sinks it. Second made three of the second half for the Boilermakers. Del Janae Williams kicks it off to Ella Sawyer. A lot more involved earlier in this game. Here's Jayla Smith, gets the steal. Speed in transition, up and in. Follow your alma mater or favorite team in their pursuit of the prestigious Learfield Directors Cup. At Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. Wide open, got him! Touchdown, Cornell! Seth Morales, holy Toledo! Thomas steps away, Coleman football, and got it! Beasley rushes free for the Purdue touchdown! It's pandemonium, coach, hope the year! I hope we have a whole lot more of these. It's a great win for Purdue. For nearly a century, Rossade Stadium has been the home of Purdue football as we forge it. Get to know us at indianakitchen.com. Both our pro boilers and Indiana Kitchen are boiler made. Derek Barnes had a big game for the Detroit Lions. Seven tackles in the Lions' upset win over the New York Giants on Sunday. Jawan Bentley for the New England Patriots had nine tackles in their win over the New York Jets. And on Sunday, David Bell, four catches for 22 yards in the uh, Browns' loss to Buffalo. That game being played in Detroit because of the massive snowstorm that hit uh, western New York. Um, we're joined by Tyrone Tracy, Jr. Did you ever have to play a game in snow in, in high school? Oh, or yeah. In, in, uh, yeah. What was that like? Um, I mean, it was definitely difficult. Um, I played uh, running back and receiver. It was my freshman year, actually. Um, and, I mean, it was kind of like any other snow, snow game. Um, you have your ups and downs, but, I mean, it was definitely cold out there. Yeah, yeah and it's been cold the last couple of weeks. How uh, – how hard is it when you have uh, weather like you had against the Hawkeyes here and then last week, uh, you know, with Illinois and, and then in Northwestern to stay warm and to, to, to make sure that your hands are warm? Because that's the biggest thing for a receiver, make sure your hands are good. Um, yeah, for a receiver, I feel like um, our sideline does a great job of making sure that we have um, the heated briefing on and um, making sure that, you know, uh, we have hand warmers um, and, and jackets and coats um, so that when we're not playing out there on the field, we are staying warm on the sideline. Um, but, you know, growing up in Indiana, you do play in cold weather, so I think I'm a, I'm a little accustomed to it. There you go. Uh, we talked with Coach Brom a little er earlier about the portal. You went into the portal last year uh, after your last season with the Hawkeyes. Uh, talk about your decision to come closer to home, play your final season in uh, West Lafayette, an hour away from your hometown. Um, I mean, I, my decision really came from just um, – I feel like it was, it was a lot of opportunities here, um, and then also also close to home. Um, my mom and dad, uh, they can come up anytime they want to see me. Um, I got cousins also look up to me, so they all want to come up and you know see what I'm doing and um, make sure that they're a part of my journey, not just you know um, seeing it from on TV. They're actually coming up here to see what I'm doing um, and actually making more memories with me. So I mean the the journey has been been great so far. You had some company coming over from Iowa City. Charlie Jones also decided to transfer. Had you talked about it, it, this with each other, or did you, is this something you came up with individually? Um, well, it was really individually at first, but then it kind of got to, like, me and him just, you know, talking about the opportunities that we, we, could, we could do here. Um, and then just, you know, what he wanted to do with his football career, what I wanted to do with my football, fo with my football career. Um, so, and I think, you know, the decision really came out to help both sides. It is certainly a receiver-friendly offense here at Purdue. How long did it take you to really feel like you learned the, the, the offense and felt comfortable in it? Um, Coach Brom and Coach McGee, they did a great job of um, developing me and Charlie, really, um, you know, with this offense. Um, it's very complex, and 
to to be in it, you really have to just dive right in um, head first. Um, you can't really be scared of anything. And uh, Coach Brown did a great job of um, let me go out there and just play fast and do what I do. Uh, this is the first time you've been a member of the Boilermakers and part of this in-state rivalry, this whole old duck and bucket thing. What have your teammates told you about? I, I'm sure you, you were familiar with the game growing up in Indianapolis, but now you're going to be a player in the game. What, have, what are you hearing from your teammates? Um, well, I mean, it's, today was the first day we had practice, but everybody was fired up out there today. Um, and they, are, they, knew, you know, they know what's going on. They know um, the, the rivalry behind um, the bucket. Um, but, I mean, they haven't really said much to me, but I do. Uh, I can see on their faces and uh, their actions that this means a lot to them. I, I talked to the coach earlier about his traditions on Thanksgiving Day, both in terms of the football game that they play and also the meals. What, what were the traditions in the Tracy household? What did you do and what did you eat growing up? Um, I mean, I got a big family. Um, I got, you know, three brothers. Um, my dad's a, a one son of five. So, I mean, we have a big family. Um, so we all get together. Uh, everybody brings in the best dish. Um, me personally, I like ham, um, collard greens, um, and uh, dressing. That's really my go-to for, for Christmas Day. Um, but um, tomorrow is my birthday, actually. So Really? Yeah. So we're going to uh, see what's going on. I think my family's going to come up you know, and see me. So uh, hopefully they'll bring us some, some cook, cook, cook food for now, me. Now, it's always a little tough. I, I'm, I'm a December baby, and I always thought I got a little <laughs> bit shortchanged. And, you know, you got, so you're so close to the holidays there. So did, were you able to, are you far enough away from Thanksgiving? You feel like you got your proper due on your birthday. Um, it's definitely um, a little difficult just because, one, you know, it gets dark really fast. So, you know, having yeah. birthday parties when I was younger was always, you know, hard. But um, I do think that when you have the, my birthday and Thanksgiving, you do get, you know, a little bit of both instead of just, you know, just Thanksgiving. I mean, I'm, ha I'm happy with, you know, when my birthday lands. So. Well, we're happy you made the decision to come to West Lafayette and play this season. Good luck against the Hoosiers, and good luck going forward as you thank continue you. your career. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right, we're going to talk with Corey Trice next. It is the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Rorman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Oh, reverse. Heading the other way. This is Tracy. Tyrone Tracy. Still going. Wow, that's a gain of 17 on second and 20. A gain of 19 for Lewis. They give it to him again to the 15. Last time they did this, Mike Allstott was in the backfield. Second down and six. O'Connell to throw. Maybe. Gets it out of there. Caught. Jones. Touchdown. O'Connell to Jones. One more time. You're gonna see on, on you're not gonna see it, but on the right side of your screen, you got Charlie Jones. He runs a bench route and the DB falls down. So he's open right now, but O'Connell's looking the other way, surprisingly. And then he finds him, and the reason he's so wide open because he was still on the third down and eleven. Movement on the line, and a flag comes down. This is gonna be a free play for Purdue. And caught by Durham. Out across the 50 to the 45. What a throw it. Tight end Durham. Touchdown, Purdue. Northwestern has what they want. They have two guys to stop this play, but they both come across the line of scrimmage, and Durham is leaking out. Wide. But the middle is soft. That's where the passing game can have success for Northwestern. Freeman looks like a design quarterback. Wrong. Had it ripped away. Purdue's got the football. Cam Allen comes up with the fumble recovery. They need to get to the 49. Quick screen outside, I would imagine. They don't have the numbers for the draw. Freeman lost the ball. And Northwestern retains possession. Welcome back to the Jeff Brom Show. We're live at Walk-Ons in the Purdue Memorial Union, where it's always game day with a taste of Louisiana. The 2022 Purdue football season is presented by Purdue Global. Purdue Global is Purdue's accredited and affordable online solution for working adults. Persistence pays off at Purdue Global. And we have a persistent football player sitting next to us, Corey Trice, who overcame an injury last year to come back and play another season. He's a defensive back from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, and 
We should also mention a Purdue graduate. Congratulations on that. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. There you go. And a three-time academic All-Big Ten selection as well. Um, communication, right? Yes, sir. So uh, once football is done, any idea at this point where you're going to go or what you, what you want to do when your football days are over? Um, I just want, really want to stay around the game. You know, I want to go into coaching, you know, and just try to, like, uh, get people, like, um, from, where I, from where I'm from, like, get to where they want to go. I mentioned you're from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, not an in-state product, but you've been around this old oak and bucket rivalry long enough to know what it's all about. Uh, what, what, what do you think about this, and how fired up are you to play against the Hoosiers on Saturday? Um, I'm very fired up because um, the, la the previous years I never got to play in the game. I always got to watch, so now I'm finally able to play, and uh, I feel like um, we've been uh, practicing well, and we're just excited. You mentioned uh, you weren't able to play last year. You got injured early in the season, had to go through a, you know, a tough uh, rehab mm -hmm. to get that knee back in shape. What, uh, how long did it take, and when did you start to feel confident and feel like yourself again on the field? Uh, yeah, it was long. It was really long, but um, it was tough, and you know, uh, I had a good, uh, like good people around me. And um, really, I started to feel myself, really, um, Minnesota game. You know, I was out there, that was the first game I took the brace off, and I would just start playing. I asked Tyrone about staying warm. Uh, the last couple of games have been pretty tough in terms of both the wind and the cold. Uh, defensively, I guess you get to move around maybe a little, a little bit out there, but how do you stay warm during the football games, and how do you stay focused when the wind's blowing about 30 or 40 miles an hour? Um, well, I don't even wear sleeves. Like, I don't even wear, like, long sleeves. I wear, like, two sleeves on my arms. Like, I just really don't let it bother me. You know, like, on the sideline, I get a jacket, though, and I sit on the, um, I sit on the heated seats. But when I'm in the game, I don't really think about it. You know, it's, uh, I've always been uh, interested in how defensive backs are able to, to you know, y you are one-on-one -on -one a lot of times with the receiver, and everybody in the stadium is going to know right away who got the better of that. Right. How do you, uh, when, on plays when you don't do as well as you would like, how are you able to put that aside and get ready and, and line up and play the next play? Because um, our coaches always talk about it's the next play, it's the next play. So I always try to keep that mindset, uh, no matter if I do good or do bad. Oh, you got to move on to the next play. The one thing, Corey, about this Big Ten, you've got a chance to face a lot of pretty good receivers. Who are a couple of the toughest that you've had to play in your time here? Um, you know, it's been a lot. You know, uh, really every, every every weekend, every weekend uh, it's tough matchups. But really in practice where they at, you know, practice like the guys we, I go against every day. David yeah. Bell. David Bell was a pretty tough right. matchup, wasn't he? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And you got a chance to see Ron. Unless you were here for Rondell. Right. Yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, talk about the Trice family traditions. We've talked about with Tyrone and with Coach Brown about what Thanksgiving is like. What was Thanksgiving like when you when you were growing up? Um, so like, it really like we really a big family. So we all get together. Like we always pick somebody house every year. We always go there. You know, um, we have breakfast and then we come back um, and then we have another get together. You know, we have dinner and we play like card games, table games, and just. You know, just really just um, hang around each other. No football games where you're knocking each other out uh, and no sending sense. each other to the hospital, right? <laughs> We're usually just watching the football games. What's, what's your go-to dish on Thanksgiving? My mom's sweet potatoes. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's pretty yeah. good. <laughs> mom's cooking is always the best. Right. Uh, talk about your season. Have you been happy with uh, how you played? And, and, again, coming back from the injury, uh, you know, this team is – has had some ups and downs, but a uh, little bit of an up note here in November. Yeah, uh, I'm definitely, I'm definitely happy. You know, I'm just really happy to be out there, just because what I went through last year. You know, just being out there with the guys and just being uh, playing, playing for the coaches and playing for the team. It just, you know, I f I'm pleased with it. Um, if you were to summarize your your five years here, what will you take away from the experience, both on the field and off the field? What have you learned about yourself, mm -hmm. and uh, and how are you a different person than the day you walked on campus? Um, well, I, I just learned to really never give up, you know. And I feel like Purdue def definitely um, prepared me for on and off the field, so I just feel like it was definitely a good experience. Definitely. Uh, uh, you've had the opportunity to watch the guys carry the old oak and buck, and I don't know if you were a part of the celebration or not the last couple of years, but uh, have you visualized taking that bucket out and, and walking around the field with it on Saturday? Definitely, definitely. Uh, let's see if we can make that come true. Corey, <laughs> oh, yes, best sir. of luck on Saturday, and congratulations again for coming back from the injury and having an yes, outstanding sir. Appreciate season. Appreciate you. Thank you. All right, we'll have the head coach back with us after this. It's the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Do. A lot of people come back to games. They like the program. They like the kind of kids they have. Oh. And he just absolutely.
absolutely hammers. What a nice call, too, out of the baseline, out of bounds. Atmosphere for college basketball. But look at this little duck and seal. Another court between, should we attack or should we go inside? Good settle here. Edie's been waiting for the ball for two possessions. Absolutely. Area, you are dead on delivery. And right here, goal, no matter what he does. That's number four. I'm not mistaken, my goal. They're late in the shot clock, got to get something going. Jenkins, late, drive, stop and pop. Got it for two. Oh, he split beautifully, didn't he? Well traveled. But here, just a little split, a little crossover, dead delivery. Down that sideline, able to keep it in for the point. Uh, there's no more servers left on this roster from last year. So when Raven Colvin hit the floor in the offseason, she wanted to become the best setter in America. And she certainly has improved vastly, having never served. And Emma Ellis gets another kill. Had a career high 27 digs against the Boilermakers in the 2021 season. Balance Seifer puts it down herself. Not bad for a 5'10 setter. Shows you the strength of this Boilermaker team. Maddie Chin, the senior over there, to give Hudson some words of encouragement. Balance Seifer, Ellis on the right side, and the Boilers get the point. So I'm sure it'll be a nice reunion after senior night festivities are over tonight. Chin puts it down in the face of Humphrey. That's not a nice welcome back but it'll suffice, goes back to serve. Hudson with the back row attack and she gets the kill. Makers as the presenting sponsor of the Jeff Brown Show and proud partner of Purdue Athletics, Roman Automotive Group, Boiler Up and Hammer Down. Again, we'll have another Jeff Brown Show coming up December 22nd. That's the day after high school signing day, and it's also uh, uh, this is the Boilermakers will be in the middle of bowl preparation. Certainly, Purdue will be playing somewhere. Uh, we don't know where yet or when, but somewhere in, uh, in the vicinity of Christmas and New Year's Day. Uh, we got a boiler up here on Facebook from Evansville, Cicero, Indiana, Huntertown, Indiana, home of the Carroll Cougars, who are playing for a 6A state title on uh, Friday. Good luck to Carroll and all of the schools that will be participating in the state championships. And also Matt from Syracuse says, come hungry and play hard. Well, we're not going to be too hungry after Thanksgiving, but I promise they will play hard on Saturday. All right, Jeff, let's talk about this Indiana team. Uh, the Hoosiers won their first three games and then went on a losing string, but uh, they really bounced back last week. They were down 34-17 to Michigan State and wound up winning that game in double overtime. And you have to believe that's going to be a put a little pep in their step this week as they get ready for the bucket game. Well, I think so. you got to give them a lot of credit. Uh, they showed a lot of fight. Uh, they played hard to the very end. I think they, uh, you know, they changed some things up. They put a, basically a running quarterback in there and, really completed one pass during regulation and one in overtime, and that was it. It just decided to run the football and run the quarterback and zone read and power read and all those misdirection things to confuse the defense, eliminate interceptions because you're not throwing the ball, eliminate turnovers and negative plays, and they just found a way to create some, some big plays uh, through running the football, and then their defense played hard and, and kept them in the game, and they got turnovers, and they did good on special teams, and their formula was good. So I'm, I'm sure they're going to use the same formula. Uh, at their home stadium, and we're going to have to play good football and have to be ready for a lot of different elements that we haven't seen this year and make sure we're fully prepared. Big plays are what got them over the hump on Saturday. Sean Shivers had a 79-yard touchdown run, and then uh, Jalen Lucas uh, became the first FBS player this year to have uh, two kickoff returns for touchdowns. He has a dynamo back returning kicks. Well, this is a freshman that has a lot of speed, and he's done a really good job, so we're going to have to – you know, account for that. I uh, don't want to give anything away, but we got to make sure we know where he's at. He's dangerous with the ball in his hand. Uh, and they had a lot of big plays, so I give them a lot of credit. Uh, in, in, in rough conditions, they decided to just run the football, and they made a lot of really big plays, and they played hard, and they were into the game. You can see the enthusiasm they were playing with, and that's that's half the battle. So I just think right now they're uh, definitely going to come ready to, to knock us off and, uh, you know, send us home unhappy and uh, play good football. Defensively, they've had some injuries, but they've got a lot of experience, particularly in the secondary. They've got some guys that have played a lot of football games back there. Well, 10 starters, uh, senior starters on defense. So it seems like we've seen these guys every year. None of them graduate. Uh, so they, they know what they're doing. And they play hard, and uh, they do a lot of different 
give you a lot of different looks on defense. So I think they try to be creative. They try to confuse the offense a little bit and take some chances. And, uh, you know, they've just done a really good job. And I just think it's an experienced group that we're going to have to execute and make sure that we don't turn the ball over and make cr critical mistakes. And uh, we just really played solid football. You know, we've had to talk about weather a lot more in November than we typically like to. And the good news is on Saturday it's not going to be 30 degrees and it's not going to be blowing at about 20 or 25 miles an hour. But it looks like we do have rain in the forecast. So uh, how do you prepare for that this week as you get ready for the bucket game? Well, trust me, we, we look at the weather every day, at least I do, probably uh, twice an hour and just see where things were at. And uh, I was happy early on to see that it was not going to be as cold. Uh, so I was very hopeful. And then uh, in the last 24 hours, it's it's gone to a slight chance of rain, the more than likely a steady rain throughout the game. So you're going to have to adjust, and it, it makes things a little more difficult on offense to you know throw the ball and catch it and hold on to it. So we've already started uh, you know what we just call a wet ball drill, where you know half a practice today on offense, we 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 wetted the ball down and got used to throwing it and handling it and catching it and running it. So you just got to do the best job you can. It's never it's never easy, but you can't allow that to defeat you. You can't allow that to beat you. The other team has the same problems. We have to handle it and execute it better. You mentioned practice. There's a little bit different schedule every year around the bucket game with Thanksgiving. Uh, you've, you've practiced today. What's the schedule like the rest of the week going into Saturday's game? Well, we've got a great group of guys that are uh, really good teammates, and they work really hard year-round to be the very best they can be. So we're thankful for all the effort they put in. Uh, tomorrow we'll, we'll, we'll get things going early and uh, have a morning practice, which we normally don't do because they are off school. Uh, and then we'll have a big, really our big Thanksgiving dinner for the team and all the uh, staff members and support staff members and families will be uh, tomorrow afternoon for lunch. So we'll do that and come back for some quick meetings and give them the rest of the time off. And then uh, the same thing on Thursday. We'll, we'll get up early, practice, and really after, after that in the morning, they're off for the rest of the day. And uh, for anybody that you know, has plans, they're, they're more than happy to, to, to do those wherever they want with their family or friends, or if they don't, they just, you know, contact us coaches and we'll make sure we, we take care of them. But we do want them to, you know, be able to spend some time with their people and uh, the people that support them and enjoy the holidays as much as everyone else. All right, we'll have the final segment of the Jeff Brom Show presented by the Roman Automotive Group coming up after this on the Purdue Global Sports Network from Learfield. Our Boilermakers have always been what unite us. To this hallowed field, we return each fall to be a part of something special. We've seen legends born and moments etched in time. For nearly a century, ross Aid Stadium has been the home of Purdue football. As we forge ahead, we have a rare opportunity to fortify the legacy of future generations of faithful Boilermakers. Together, we will guarantee the passion you have for the old golden black. We'll endure for years to come. Let the carnage and the chaos continue. How about the Boilermakers? Boiler up, friends. The time is now. Feed down into the post, learn, strong inside, gets the finish for her second bucket of the day. And the first look for the Sycamores off the mark. Here comes Janae Terry, kicks it over to Petrie, and she sinks it from deep. Janae Terry, the no-look pass over to Layden. Layden down the middle, kicks it out to Harden, and she sinks it. Second made three of the second half for the Boilermakers. Delgene Williams kicks it off to Ella Sawyer. A lot more involved earlier in this game. Here's Jayla Smith, gets the steal. Speed in transition, up and in. I have a quick mea culpa. I uh, mistakenly said the Carroll Cougars are playing for a 6A state championship. It is the Carroll Chargers. 
and I've had two people correct me, so I know that they are listening, and, and my apologies to the Chargers and everyone playing for a state championship. Congratulations on having great seasons. Uh, rivalry games, and we've seen emotions in non-rivalry games in the Big Ten can bubble over. Um, you, the, there's always the fine line. You want your team to be aggressive and play hungry and play to win, but you also want to make sure that they don't give the other team extra yards on penalties. So uh, is, there, is there anything you have to say or do differently on a rivalry week uh, as opposed to other weeks? Well, it seems like uh, we've had a little bit of issue with that this year, and shoot, we've talked about it a lot. And, uh, you know, you, you can't get those penalties. You've got to control your emotions. You've got to keep it in check. You've got keep, to gotta keep our mouth quiet. We've got to let our actions speak. And, you know, it is an emotional game. So, you know, it's uh, some guys kind of get themselves going, and it's just hard for them to, to turn it down. I don't think anyone intentionally tries to do anything. But at the same time, you just you just have to control yourself, and I, me included. I mean, it's just uh, you want to win. Uh, you're giving everything you have to get it done. Uh, you're trying to fight your rear end off to, to, to make it happen, and uh, everything doesn't always go your way. So you have to just be able to handle it be able to continue to play hard and move on and stick together and do the small things. But that's it's always important. So it's just about maturing, uh, everybody, you know, making sure that uh, we keep things in check and that uh, while we want to fight and do everything we can to win, it's got to be in between the whistles. You've played in rivalry games in high school and in college and in the NFL. Uh, do the games feel differently when you're playing against an arch rival? Well, I think they do because, uh, you know, a lot of times you know who those players are. Um, You've grown up with them. You're friends with them. There's some familiarity with you and their family. And, uh, you know, you don't want to uh, be the one that gets embarrassed and goes home a loser. And uh, so, you know, you try to do everything you can uh, to help your team win. And uh, I just think that, uh, you know, football is very competitive. And in the conference, it's very competitive. And when you're playing a rivalry game, you never know who's going to win. So you just got to, you know, give it your all and hope you're coming out on the, 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 the winning end. And I think our team will play hard, and I think they understand that it's going to take a great effort and execution in order for us to do that. And the other thing about rivalry games, Jeff, there's usually somebody that steps up, maybe hasn't done a whole lot during the regular season so far, but it seems like somebody comes out of the woodwork in these games on one side or the other. Well, I think so. And, you know, we used to tease Markel Jones a little bit uh, for whatever reason, I think because he was in state uh, – he had a good career for us. Boy, when we played IU, he definitely <laughs> turned it up. And I think he just wanted to prove, you know, how good he really was. And, uh, you know, he helped us win quite a few of those games. Well, Jeff, happy Thanksgiving. Good luck to you. And let's uh, make sure that bucket comes back in West Lafayette uh, on that bus on Saturday afternoon. Okay, have a good Thanksgiving, too. All right. Thanks to our engineer tonight, Scott Fenstermaker, our producer, Austin Wilkin, and our uh, – video producer today, Hunter Massengill. The Boilermakers and the Indiana Hoosiers will kick it off at 3.30 Sunday, or Saturday, that is, in Memorial Stadium in Bloomington. Our broadcast will start at 2.30. We'll also have our Facebook Live segment coming up on the Purdue Athletics site. That'll be at 2 o'clock on Saturday. And again, uh, don't forget another Jeff Brom show coming up on December 22nd. For the head coach and for Tyrone Tracy and Corey Trice, I'm Tim Newton. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. We'll talk to you on Saturday. Good evening.